What's up, Badger fans? Um, thank you for joining us. James Madison tomorrow. Um, I'm ready for it. This is just kind of a last show before the, the game. We can talk about uh, last thoughts on this, predictions. We've had kind of a week. I know y'all did a, a bracket show on yours. You've had kind of a week to think about this more. I've had a couple guys on my show. The Sunbelt guy, Nick Osen, was just on. We've been talking about James Madison. I kind of want to just have a spot here where we can put our last thoughts on it, last predictions. Um, gentlemen, let's just start here. Let's not bury the lead. Justin, what happens in the game tomorrow? Wisconsin, James Madison. I think we went like I, I, we've we've talked about this, and I know you and I have really Ryan and I have been having a battle on this one outside of it, and he's very confident that we're going to win this one. And I've just been of the mind that I don't know what to make of this team, and nothing would surprise me with them. Like they could come out and they could win this game by twenty points. They could also come out and let them get the other team get hot and get confident and just not be able to stop them on defense because we've seen it happen. We've seen it happen in the middle of a game against Nebraska where it's like suddenly we just fell off a cliff. I don't think JMU is capable of doing the things defensively necessarily that have caused us problems this year. But I think they're definitely a team that's capable of just going nuclear on us because I don't think that we have the – we're good enough defensively to stop it. But we should be able to score consistently on them. It's kind of like the Illinois game today when I was watching them. I, I, the game was close for a really long time, but I'm watching it. I'm like, Illinois is getting whatever they want offensively. They're getting to, to the rim. They're getting wide open three-point looks. Like, this is going to be one of those games where the other team just runs out of gas. And that's what happened. That should be what happens with Wisconsin. We end up just outscoring them to the point where they just can't stay with us and get as easy a shot as we do. So your prediction is a Badger win? Yes. Okay. Uh, my prediction is clearly a Badger win because why would I predict anything else? Also, look, I mean, they're tallest guy 6'9", right? TJ Bickerstaff, they don't have a lot of size. And so for me, it's points in the paint. It's Crowell and Wall have to, they, they're going to eat. And I feel like that's the reason that we get this done tomorrow. <clears throat> We've seen many times throughout the season that when we're playing up against a physical five, Crowell struggles. That's not the case this game. Now They've got a guy off the bench who's also like 6'8", carry that has a little more size to him. But I don't really see anybody that's going to stop Wall and Crow. And if Wall and Crow are doing their business down low, and then you've got the shooters outside, at this point, I really don't think anything's going to stop them. And another thing is Crow, who's also my kind of like key to the play, key to the game, he's got to shoot from outside too. They're not going to defend him out there very well. So as long as he can get into a rhythm offensively early, and I hope early and often we're going down into the paint, then... I feel like the fact that we are a strong offensive team is just going to take over. This team has played virtually nobody except they did beat Michigan State first game of the season. But other than that, they've played hardly anyone. And yeah, they're they're a decent team that has good shooters. They can certainly be I mean, anyone can win in the tournament. We know that, right? But I expect this to be a game where we are somewhat, you know, poised. We've got the experience. We've got a lot of guys who have a ton of tournament experience, a lot of you know, guards in the backcourt and the front court, everyone's got that time and experience. That's going to take over. And especially the paint, we need to dominate. I think we Badgers did. winning a national title? Absolutely. Going on <laughs> final four runs? Why not? It's Believe with Rajiv on today's Locked On uh, Badgers. I agree, though. I, I, I'm irrationally, irrationally confident giving the inconsistent swings this team has shown at times this year. But I feel like you know how the swells work in the ocean? You have the, the trough, and then you have the swell. I feel like we're on a swell right now. We've been playing really well for not just the Purdue game. It's been a minute. We've been playing pretty well for a while now. Six I games. Six games, yeah. And it just feels like this team has found its gear again. And that team that we saw earlier in the year, it, this feels much closer to that team than the team we saw against Feb, uh, Nebraska, that, that second that collapsed, Michigan, Rutgers. Well, I mean, this the team against Nebraska was up. We were up by 15 or whatever in that game. Or 20 at one point, I think. This team feels like the first half version of that Nebraska game, not the second half. No, but it really feels like they're playing really well. I'm and just saying it can change that quickly with this team. It can, but I don't expect it to. Because I, I think two Fair. things with this team. Um, and I, listen, I'm I'm really confident this team could also lose. Uh, we talked about this before the show. I'm confident, but I'm not going to be shocked if they lose to a 12 seed that won 31 games because it's March. Kentucky just lost. But I feel really good for a couple of reasons. The first one is this team is as healthy as it could be. Um, I think getting those bench pieces back really helps. I think Chucky Hepburn is in an absolute groove right now. And 
one of the things I said on Twitter is you have a Hepburn who didn't play uh, in his first tournament, really, because he tore up his ankle against Iowa State. Didn't play last year because we were NIT. I think this is like a big opportunity for him. And I think he said it like I smell blood in the water, I think was his quote. I think this team goes as guards go. Um, I think people think it goes as crowd goes. I think it goes as the guards go. And I think Hepburn is in a major groove right now. So that's what I feel really good about how they're playing. And I feel really good about how Hepburn is playing. Especially defensively, right? I mean, he we know he can turn it on whenever he really wants to. And he's going to frustrate Xavier Brown. He's going to frustrate the guards on that team. And I think that's, that is a big key. So offensively for me, it's crowd defensively though. It is his Hepburn for sure. I mean, he's got to be able to control that and do his thing, get a lot of steals, create turnovers. I mean, you're talking about a team that plays in a, a crap conference. As long as we play our game, we should not have any problems. Now, of course they can come out there. I mean, look, you know, you've seen teams all day today. It was a great day in basketball, by the way, there's a lot of teams just firing threes everywhere. And if they do that and they, they shoot, you know, 65% from three. Yeah, they're probably going to win the game. But I still think that we've got enough firepower and the experience is the key. And the tournament experience really matters. And we've been, we've proven to be a team that can get it done, especially look, look, I know that there's, there's early, early season tournaments, but those things we've done well in those things. And we haven't performed well in the NCAA tournament, but this matchup specifically, I think really favors Wisconsin. Justin, what, I'm going to flip this on his head. I'm going to ask Rajiv what he's most worried about in this game. And Justin, it's not that you're pessimistic with it. You picked a Badger win, but what, what are you most optimistic about with this game? I think Blackwell, if he's healthy, he's going to play really well because he plays really well against everybody. I think if I had to lean on something, I do think that Chucky is playing really well. And I think that they'll get a solid all-around game from Wall. Um, so from those things, like the, the, the people leaning on store, like he's been on a heater kind of, he still hasn't been ultra efficient during that time. I mean, the, the game against Illinois was pretty, pretty rough if you look at it from a st statistical standpoint. But I look at it and I know he'll play athletic. I know he'll he'll do some great things in that game. I just don't know if I can lean on him and say he's gonna have a great game. And great by great game, I mean shoot well and do the little things. I do like that he's kind of turned the corner defensively. Mm. He seems to be really kind of getting a better feel for what he needs to do the last few games. Uh, what makes me nervous is that this team shoots 37% from three and they're going to shoot a lot of them. And the bottom line is if they make a high percentage, we're going to be in trouble just mm -hmm. because that's what these mid majors do. They come in here and they fire threes left and right. That's what they're good at. These guys, they have a lot of shooters and we don't defend the three very well. That's pretty clear. So if we don't defend the three well and they shoot a high percentage, we're done. Now, if we can control, that's why I want to control the paint early. If we can really slow the game down a bit, control that paint, dominate them down low, maybe get their big guys in foul trouble. It puts us in a really strong position to then go outside and start shooting. Uh, but yeah, it's anytime you play a mid-major, a 12, any double digit seed, they, they can fire the three. And if they do, it's going to be, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. Yeah. I think you nailed it, man. It's, they they shoot the ball well and we don't defend perimeter shots well. Right. Like that that's an issue, man. And that could that could absolutely or the get pick and roll. <laughs> or the pick and roll. Like and every team has some variation of that. I'll tell you another one, and I want to get to uh, a comment here from Commandant because it leads into the other question I was gonna have. Commandant Clink, who's gonna go cover their six six guard. Yeah, Edwards is their six six guard, and he's experienced too. Like our experience is there. He's been there for three years, I believe, three year starter or four year starter. I forget. Three, I think it's a three year, yeah. Oh, he's a very experienced guy, and that's a tough cover for Wisconsin. Because they don't have a six six wing like that can guard him. Yeah, you're probably putting Klesman on him. Klesman um, yeah, guards him, but Klesman uh, gives up a couple inches. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he and he likes to get down low too. Like you, like Justin, you've been saying this. They 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 play downhill, and and Terrence Edwards is going to get into the paint and cause problems. And I look, he's the guy that's going to score a lot of their points. And and I if if he does, I'm I'm okay with that. That's going to happen. We're not going to shut. We're not going to shut anyone down. We don't shut anyone down. So we're not going to shut him down. We just have to. I think we have to control the rest of their shooters. We got to do whatever we can to defend that three point line as well as, as well as possible. Badger Ron says, "Let's just not pull a Virginia." That's <laughs> oh, it, man. That's it, buddy. I, I think it'd be shocking if we scored that little. We yeah. may we may lose, but we're not going to score in the forties. Oh, I want to ask you guys this. Oh no, here we go. Oh yeah, I don't know who put that comment up, but yeah, whoever put it, was I did. Yeah, I said I was going to say it wasn't just three. Like he hit some absolute daggers. And that was the last time we truly had an incredible defensive guard. And Steph Curry made him look like he didn't even belong on the floor. 
Well, Steph Curry makes a lot of people look like I know. That, I, so. He's one of the best players <laughs> in the NBA. But, yeah, he's – it was – you could see it in that game that he was going to be – and then the following couple games that he was going to be special. Mm-hmm. Like, he just carved up some, like, really talented teams in that, that uh, drive. I lost money on that game. <laughs> I, don't, I believe it. Yeah. Because I was like, Michael Flowers will guard him. We'll be fine. Yeah, that's that's what I said going into it, too. And then I watched Michael Flowers just basically throw up his hand. I can't do anything. Can't guard him. I want I want to put this up here and ask you guys. So, JMU's won 30. Well, I think they're 31 and 4. They're over 30 wins. 30 um, schedule's been really bad. And Scotty Sixpack uh, mentioned since September 6th, they've only played two games against teams ranked higher than 121 in Ken Palm. They've racked up wins against teams that uh, that put up them that put the mid in the mid major. Uh, he's he's big on the Badgers, put him into the Sweet 16 in a sharpie. I just I'm curious where you guys are at when you see a team with 31 wins, but against a pretty by about any stretch uh, poor schedule. Like where do you find the context in that? I personally think that you you have to still take any wins seriously, um, but it obviously they're not tested against probably ultra athletic teams probably not teams with a lot of depth and size. So you have to, you can discount it to an extent, but there are teams in the middle of this, you know, the, the rankings for this that go only go five deep and are really good five deep. So would they win against a top 25 team? If they hit, if they play well with the front with their, their starters? Sure. Like there's a lot of those teams. There's a reason why some of these teams get hot guys start playing well together. They get comfortable. They get confident. Basketball is one of those sports that are so hard to really gauge and get an idea for as to what a team is because we've seen teams with limited overall talent and skill just click suddenly. And then they, they start even the Oakland game. Like I watched them. It was not, it did not, you know, it occurred to me or it was pretty blatantly obvious that they were limited athletically. Oh yeah. I'm watching them. I'm like, Kentucky has no re- – there's like this game should not be close. So I don't put a lot of stock in basketball records and especially in college because there is nothing that has more of an imbalanced schedule than NCAA college basketball. Like it's just – it's incredibly imbalanced. And why it's why I really look at conference records when I'm looking at Power 5 teams because then you get a sense of – even though the conference record's still not totally balanced, you at least have some sense of – how they rank amongst their peers with James Madison. They didn't even win their conference regular season. That was Apple app state app state got upset by Arkansas state in their in the semifinals of their conference tournament app state. Had they played JMU, maybe they would have won. Maybe we'd, we'd be getting a different team, but I feel like it just doesn't matter. I don't really look at the record. I'm much more focused on matchups and I'm much more focused on like who they have, what the app, what athletes they bring. They're definitely a talented team, but like you've said on your show this week, they're the tallest guy six nine. That's just to me. That's been our bugaboo all year long. And when we don't play big athletic fives, big guys like that, we tend to play much better basketball because Crowell can do his thing. So I, I really don't. The fact that they won thirty games means nothing to me, honestly. I know that's silly, but it's just it's it's so um, imbalanced. Like you can't really gauge anything. You look down there, they're the the teams they play this year. I don't even know who half of them are. I've never even heard of these teams. So it's like, what de- what does that really show you? This is what the, that's why it makes this tournament so great. By the way, you don't really know, yeah. and hell, who knows? I mean, maybe these guys can win a couple of games. I mean, it's not said they can't, but I'm much more focused on the players and the matchups that it rep- that it presents us. It it does feel a little bit like if Troy has a great football season and their records 12 and two, nobody, nobody would actually take them seriously. Right. Well, I mean, it's like Tulane winning, beating USC though. No, yeah, I mean, you can beat someone on a one-off, but you're not as good as that record. Probably if you're probably playing not, three. but yeah, that, but I mean, that's really what it comes down to in the, in the tournament. I mean, we've, we've seen it time after time where teams do it. We've seen teams like George Mason making a final four run. Mm-hmm. You know, were they ultra athletic and have a ton of size and stuff like that? They were good. They they played well together. They played smart. A lot of the what happens in March is do you lose your head in games when things start going a little sideways? Because we see teams get super tight. Normally the ones that are the teams that are expected to win tighten up, and especially if the other team plays with them a little bit, 
they start to get a little tense and start to make boneheaded plays. That's where I worry about Wisconsin a little bit. Because and I don't as much because of experience. That's where I, I disagree a little bit because I don't think we're going to get tight, right? We've I don't. Had I don't one of the feel worst like turnover yeah. years that we've had in the last like twenty years. So this team has shown a propensity to be dumb with the basketball in games and and sure. to let other teams stick around. We can and also force them. Look. We're going to force them on. We're going to force turnovers against against JMU, right? Maybe. So I mean, it'll balance out a little bit. I, I hear what you're saying. I just feel like that's where the roster that we've built over like have so much time with this program. That's where I think it's, that's the X factor. If these guys were all from the transfer portal and they were all new, I would have a different feeling about that because you're right. Those teams can tense up a little bit, but I don't think this team tenses up. I mean, the big, the, the last tournament they played, it was the big 10 tournament and they played amazing basketball one game after another, after another, they played four games in four days. And it, they they looked like a really tournament tested team because they bring that experience. I think that's the biggest difference between this Wisconsin Badger team and previous ones that did not fare well in the tournament. I mean, we were playing really well in the NIT tournament too until we ended up losing the Texas State. <laughs> I don't well, think we you think we're going to win. Like I know you said that, but I don't actually think it. Um, I do. I just I. <laughs> it feels like everyone has this like confidence that it's going to be like, oh, we're just going to walk over this team, and I don't, I don't see that as the, this game is that. I don't think I, I don't. don't I don't think I don't trust this team to to just be able to walk out on the court and win. And it well, feels I, like that's the attitude a lot of our fan base has. I don't think I see. I I think people are confident, and that confident doesn't necessarily mean people think they can just roll the ball. Well, it's it's the same thing with thinking that Crowell is going to go out there and eat. I don't necessarily think it's good. You and I have argued this back and forth. I showed you the game logs. I'm like, he'll have three or four games in a row where he's really good, and then he'll have three games where he's like two points, six points, four points, six you know, points. You know, he's more offensively uh, consistent than just about everybody on the team outside of Tyler Wall. When you look at – Yeah, but he's being used as a focal point of the offense. He should be con more consistent. He is, though. That's my point. Like, he scores six but points But being forced bad is my point, is is that he's being forced to take shots. It's not really like Chucky is kind of – he sh if he's shooting at an efficient level, my point is like he's one of the most efficient shooters on the team as well. well. Yeah, but if you're a post guy, your percentage should be higher than everybody else. Not to his level. Like I'm just saying, it's he's like slightly above fifty percent, right? He's not like he's shooting sixty five percent from the field. I mean, sh only Shaq shoots sixty five percent. Like, what do you expect from him? I, I expect no. mid mid to probably high fifties for a center. I mean, that's super unique for a center, is what I'm telling you. Most people, most centers don't shoot fifty five percent. Is my oh, point. by the way, he has the best three point percentage shooting on the team as well. Just FYI, I mean, <laughs> really efficient. Like the. the there's I'll no take my chances with Blackwell against him in a three-point shootout every day of the week. I mean, well, they they both are. They're both really high up there. I'm just saying, like, he can score from everywhere, and he's going to be able to do that against this team. That's where my confidence comes from. He can do that against this team. Like, no, he can't do that against every other team. But when you look at the games he has performed well in, they're 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 frankly against lineups that kind of have this look to them. That's, you know, I mean, like that's, we don't know, right? We don't know. We, none of us have watched a James Madison game. I, I went back and watched a couple of their highlights and stuff. I, we don't know listen, I don't want to say I told you so when it comes to Crowell, but I think you do. I think you actually want to let me down so many times in games where I expect him to go out and play well, where he needs to play well for us to win. And it's I, like, I, you hold there was. a standard, man. I, I, I'll say this. Commandant agrees with you. I agree with Justin. I sense overconfidence in the chat. I want to. I think we're going to win by like seven. I want to be super clear on this. I don't think we're going to beat them by thirty. I think we're going to win by like seven or eight. That's that's uh, not what he said offline. Everybody, no. I, I I am very confident they win this game. JMU is not a not a pushover. Like I don't think we roll the ball out and rock over them. But I'm I'm pretty confident we win. By the way, Jay Harper's in the chat. Let's go Badgers. What's up, Jay? Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a ten point. I think it's a ten point victory. That's yeah. that's my prediction. It, it, it should be in that realm. Honestly, if we're clicking on offense and our, our defense shows any level of consistency, we should be able to score against them because I don't think they're good enough defensively to stop. It. Even if Crowell doesn't have a good game, I think everyone we're capable of running offense on this team and scoring. Uh, and, I'll point real quick too. Sorry, I just want to say like the size thing also helps Wall. It helps store finishing the paint. It's not just like. They're short, so Crowell needs to feast. It helps. It helps Wall a tremendous yeah. amount. A healthy Wall is going to eat that team up. And you know that Wall is going to want to. This is his last tournament. He desperately wants to play well, and I feel like he's going to come out firing tomorrow. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how Wall and and Blackwell look in this game. 
if they it with getting dinged up in the last one if they're looking like they're 100 percent or at least close a, to it. is this a positive bow dragon here what's going on Bo? what'd you what have you been drinking today bud i am shocked that any of you think jamu even has a one percent i think he's trying to reverse jinx us this is going to be an asshole. <laughs> That's from Bo Dragon, uh, which means we probably are going to lose now. He, he's still going to say fire guard though. After we, with, yeah. if we do, if we do whoop this team, <laughs> um, we're, we're going to have a one point win in this one, and Bo's going to be like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, uh, sports chat with Matt, who has his own channel as well. Really good stuff. Go check that out. He recently did a show with Jared Berger and um, said, "I'm liking Wisconsin's chances tomorrow. I think it comes down to uh, Chucky for how far this team will go." Let's let's whip it around the horn. Any last thoughts that any of you have on this? Because, I, I mean, any last things that you think have been left unsaid? What's your score prediction? Anything that we still need to talk about with this game tomorrow? I'll throw a score pred- prediction on. I'll say 78-71. Also a seven-point victory. Okay, very good. I think it's going to be 80-70. to 70. I think we'll get to our 80 just because I, I think we're going to be able to score a decent amount on these guys. And the one player we haven't really talked about, you, you just mentioned him, is A.J. Storr. I mean, I've been focusing more on the front court. We've talked about Chucky, but... Yeah, like you mentioned, AJ Store, who just if he could finish a little bit better, wow, just the, he would be so incredible. But you're right; you made a really good point about the fact that this is a lack of size is going to help him finish, and so that's a really key point as well. Which is why I think overall in the paint, that's where the to me that's where this game is won and or lost. And yeah, also it comes down to rebounding. We have to be able to rebound properly because yeah. we've had games and that we've had games of this year where we rebound really well. <clears throat> Well, it's an Excuse effort me. thing with this team. Right. And then other games where we don't, I don't think effort's going to be a problem. When the NCAA tournament, and and, I, and the reason I say that is look what just happened in the Big Ten tournament. A, a lot part of, of it will come down to, tournament. part of it a will come of, down to what their actual, what their strategy is, though, with that, too. Like it's possible that JMU just comes out and says, we're going to crash. We're sending all five at the glass and trying to recover. Wisconsin runs, but they they're very like, strategic in their their running like the if you're jmu i would take the risk at, at crashing the boards because if you can grab four five six seven eight offensive rebounds in this game that'll be massive for them yeah it would be yeah. huge if they get second chance points i i think that might backfire though it could but i just don't think we push the ball that much to really cause too many problems i mean we do or, huh store does yeah. store store, store will just start store will just <laughs> leak out of there man he will he will quickly get down the floor. He'll attack even when he shouldn't be. Or can see a, <laughs> shield, a Viking shield wall on the other side, and he's yeah. going to attack that thing in transition. I, yeah, I, I think I said seven point win. I actually think it might be a little. I'm, I'm going to say like 83 to 75, 74. But if, if to me, I think it might be a game where the entire second half it feels like we're keeping them at. Our yeah, side. the game could get tighter late. I, I like. There is a, there is definitely, uh, there's two ways I looked at this. It's either going to be a, a close badger loss or it's going to be, I think Wisconsin will win fairly comfortably. If they come out and they're playing, clicking on offense, I think that they'll, they'll be able to pull away a little bit and then maybe give up some of that late. Yeah. I, I'm going to let J- Rajiv take this comment. But I just want to say really <laughs> quick to finish this up. I really think we talked about some of the bad matchup for us on the perimeter defense. I think this is, could be a terrible matchup for James, James Madison as well. I think they might have a hell of a time defending the paint. Store is uh, going to be a problem for them. Yeah, for sure. Illini cast, uh, Sonny Verma, good uh, good guy, uh, says, I'm more optimistic uh, for your chances after today. 3-0 Big Ten today. Conference may be better than we got credit for. Listen, I've been saying this all year long. Uh, yes. If you've listened to me at all, I've said, and Justin has been the We're antithesis the of this, saying of the, the Big Ten. I understand that, but I wanna, this is the only time that we that, that you can actually really prove how good the conference is. I, I know, I know it's just it's just the first round, but I do think the Big Ten is a lot better than people think it is. I think we're deeper. Look, Michigan State is going to give a North Carolina a hell of a game. I'm telling you, the spread for that game was shockingly low, by the way, when it came out, only at four. Now it's down to three and a half. Big Ten's going to be a massive like problem in that game. I, Exactly. I just feel like the Big Ten is a good conference. Like Illinois, we've talked about Illinois. Obviously, Sonny's an Illinois guy. I mean, look, they 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 started slow today, but they just they can turn it on so fast. And I I think Nebraska's gonna fare well. I think Northwestern's gonna fare well. I'm not saying everyone's gonna win all the games. We're gonna have eight teams in the Elite Eight. I'm not saying that. I just the Big Ten is a good conference that I think, and it's sh- again, it shows the test that, that that we have gone through, that we have put up th- throughout the year, and the fact that we finished fifth in the conference, like that's something to be proud of. Um, and there's another comment I want to put up here real fast here, Ryan, as well. Um, I've started, and it's uh, 
if they get into foul trouble, JMU's in trouble. I think this is something that we we need to focus on for our for us as well, which is fouls. That's got to be a real big thing because in the tournament, you know that games are called a little tighter, similar to what happened in the Big Ten tournament where we were yeah, they're more we were about the sure. refs. Like it's definitely something that we need to be very careful about. So I'm hoping that that through coaching, guard is really talking about you got to be disciplined when you're down low. They're going to call fouls. You got to stay, keep your verticality. Like we've got to make sure that we don't have wall with two fouls after five minutes. That that cannot happen tomorrow because he's way too yeah. important to this team. And the same thing for Crowell. Look, we know the, our lack of front court depth. Well, James Madison knows the same thing. Right. So you can, you better believe that Edwards and Bickerstaff are going to try to get our guys in foul trouble and then get Winter and Carter Gilmore on the floor. And then all of a sudden it's a different yeah. ball game. So it's very critical that we stay disciplined and we have to keep ourselves out of foul trouble. Really, really important key to the game. Yeah. It's a great point because we've seen really dumb fouls from Wall and Crowd both. And they're veteran guys. Like I'll tell you this that, that foul he fouled out on talking about Wall now in the, Illinois game on that clean block, you can make an argument you still don't need to take that risk with four fouls at, 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 at towards the end of a tight game, right? They need to be smarter. They're veterans. Uh, we talked about Crowell fouling on that kind of reach around, which like on, in, in, the, in the Indiana game, I forget which game, but you got to be smarter if you're a veteran. You cannot pick up ticky tack calls in this tournament, period. You got to be well, better than that. And it's called completely different than it is during the Big yes. Ten season. And that's 100%. That is why you need to learn to adjust because. You can't get ultra physical in these games. They won't let you play that way. There, a lot of teams struggle with that. That's why we, I think, we see so many upsets. I think that we see see a lot of teams come in and like they want to push the athletic advantage and just get really physical. And what ends up happening is they get in foul trouble because they're too aggressive. And now you're kind of letting the other team back into it, and it's a problem. And unlike a lot of seeds that are one through five, we don't have the front court depth to actually mm -hmm. manage that. And that's that's a huge miss yeah, for us. You don't want to be bringing said, Carter Gilmore in to be a, necessarily have to provide any scoring punch in the front court. No, you don't want that with Nolan Winter either, quite yeah. frankly. Right, um, and, and you don't you don't want to push that scoring onto our guards. Like it has to be those guys. In, in my opinion, it's got to be Wall and Crowd that dominate. I want to see those guys have, you know, 18, 19 points tomorrow. Both of them. I really think that they can have great games, but they've got to stay. They've got to stay on the floor. Well, it'll depend a little bit with crowd how they defend them. Like I, I just want to see aggressive crowd. Like if they, because yeah. they, they, they may send doubles. In which case, I want to see you make good passes, hit shooters. But I, I've, I've done a lot of Stephen Crowell defense on this show. If he, if he's a non-factor in tomorrow's game, I'll hammer him because it, that would be inexcusable. Like you have to show up and play hard tomorrow. Uh, you have a size advantage, and it's the biggest game of the year. You got to do it, and I think he will. I think he'll show up and he'll play hard. Um, and then JMU, if he does that, is going to have to make a decision: do we double him or not? And then that opens up so much. You're going to have to do the same thing with Tyler Wall. Do we double him or not? It's going to open up so much. Um, let me pull a, really quick a couple of the other people in the chat. Your your predictions. Will Hanna has Badgers 81-74. Uh, Bo, Bo is all over this game. Bo, uh, Bo, Bo is, come on, man. <laughs> uh, Brian Dodson, really has, Dodson, thanks for a two seed. <laughs> um, Caleb has Wisconsin by almost 20. So there is confidence here. Herb has us by 14. Uh, Lonkers has a five-overtime game. <laughs> L Mills has a nine point win for the Badgers. So it is, it is pretty confident in the chat. Um, guys, any football thoughts? I know this has been primary basketball, but football practice starts tomorrow. Yep, Justin. Exactly. Spring practice starts tomorrow. It's, it's Christmas Eve, everybody. Thankful. You have many Christmas Eves throughout the year. I know. Signing day. They all revolve around Badger football. That's it. Um, anything in particular. So there's only one practice and then they're taking an extended break and they have the rest of the practices. Um, Anything in particular you guys either heard recently on the Longo interview, things that you've been thinking about in your head, whatever it is. Um, Regie, I'll start with you on this one. Anything that you're just thinking about on football lately? I'm just thinking about how many days there are left until we actually can see these guys play. I was very disappointed there's no spring game because of the Camp Randall renovations. That's very disappointing for us. But um, look, I, obviously the, the, the Longo situation with the quarterback, he says it's going to be a quarterback um, battle, obviously between Locke and, and Van Dyke. I'm looking forward to it. And of course, the one thing that I want to see is the linebacking play. I mean, that's something we've talked about a lot over the course of the year and in the offseason already. Um, you know, we've got a lot of guys that are new, and I want to see the speed that we've been kind of hearing about uh, from on Twitter, from Brady Collins and these guys. Like, there's clearly a lot of increased athleticism on this team. So how that translates in these few practices, who shines, especially 
uh, in that defensive like front seven. That is that's clearly an issue for us last year. And if we're gonna make a jump next year, that has to be the unit, in my opinion, that you see that biggest jump. So I'm really focused on that defensive front seven and finding out how they're doing in practice and who's shining and who's climbing that depth chart and making big plays. Uh, because you know that's going to be the key to how we can grow next year. Yeah, I, when it comes to the quarterback stuff and things like, I'm, let's let's be honest. Like the coaches are just coach speaking. It's going to be sure. Van Dyke. Like there's, he didn't come here to be the backup quarterback. And honestly, he probably from a skill set standpoint and and experience, he's the one that should be starting. Mm-hmm. So. I, I don't have any issue with that. I mean, we could talk a good game on that, whatever we want. What we what do we want to see? We want to see the quarterback show growth, all of them, show that we're we're taking a step in the right direction and this scheme is working for them. Um, when it comes to the players, I think honestly, I want to see growth in the offense in general. You know, in the spring, I want us to come out of it, and I want people to the press to come out and say effectively, yeah, there's going to be some big things from this offense. Like they, they look crisp. There's certain like guys just seem to have a better feel and look more dominant. And I want to hear much like Rajiv that I don't, you don't know what to really take from spring practices, but I want to hear that we look athletic on the exactly. defensive side of the football. I want to hear that the linebackers look fast, whether they're making plays or not. I want to hear that they're, they look like they can move and that they'll be able to potentially make plays. And I want to hear that the instincts are there. I don't want to hear, you know, so-and-so jumped the wrong gap and gave up a 50-yard run. You know, that's the type of stuff that I'm a little concerned with, potentially. That's what happened Um, during the season last year. Yeah, again. (laughs) again. A run defense wasn't terrible except for the Iowa game. Outside runs. The outside outside runs were so scary to watch. It was like they were just getting swallowed up. I just don't want to see our guys get swallowed up, and that's not something that you see in a traditional traditional Wisconsin defense. Our guys just don't get swallowed up on every, every single block. And last year, the linebackers were getting swallowed on every single play. They were completely we weren't giving up like fifty yard runs though. We were giving up like ten yard runs consistently, and that was that was the backbreaker because teams just kept gashing us for five, six, seven, eight yards, and it's like we and just could not get guys in the right spot. I just I, want teams to know. I want teams to come into Camp Randall and we're on the on, we're on the road and know that, like in the past, that okay, we're not going to be able to run the ball very well on this team, so we're going to have to beat them elsewhere. But last year, people came in with confidence that they could run the ball on us, and that was very demoralizing for me throughout mm-hmm. the year. And yeah, it did get better as the season went on. It got better after the first couple of drives of a game. We definitely had stints where we we were stuffing runs. Our percentages were higher there. But I want to be back to a defense that is feared. And that you're not going to be able to come in and beat us up front, and that's offensively and defensively. Both are, are, are in the trenches. We need to dominate. And last year it was a bit of a struggle there. That's a, it's a really key thing. We've got to win that battle up front. And Carson says those we only had ten yard runs because of a certain Hunter Roller being an eraser a bit on the back end. He did clean a few of those up for he sure. Did. I I just want to see the defensive line stuff. So. I agree. Justin, on the quarterback side, I agree with everything you said. I, I, it's going to be Van Dyke, and I really just want – I just want to hear – because this offense will go how the quarterback goes. That's mm-hmm. that's football in general. I just want to hear that we're pushing the ball downfield, that the receivers are, are making plays down the field, that Tyler Van Dyke looks good, that he's getting snaps quickly in, in the right spot. Um, we know that's going to be happening. Is that a deep ball thrower since Wilson? I, who knows? Potential. Potentially, based off what he's shown so far in his career, I think that that's, that's it's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, I, I maybe not here, but I'm saying what he's shown so far in his career is a incredible ability to hit guys on deep routes. I mean, he's got the strongest arm since Deacon. I think we can say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, he's I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll, on the one I'm really though that I really want to see is to me, it's the defensive line. I want to hear if Jamel Howard looks good. I, because the linebacker stuff, I think the linebackers are going to be fine. I think we we've seen Jaheim Thomas play. Like we, we, there's film out there. I, we know how athletic they are. I'm not. I'm really not even worried about them. I just think it's going to come and go with the defensive line. I, I really do. I don't think it's necessarily that I'm concerned with them not looking athletic. It's more the instincts and being like hitting the right holes. I want guys to know what their job is and to do it effectively. Because the discipline is going to be the big deal. Last year, our discipline, our gap discipline stunk. That needs to be better this year. 
And these guys are going to be better athletes. They're going to have time to diagnose and get downhill. And that should make a difference. But yeah, that's, that's one of the big things. I want to know who took over Bo Dragon's account and is in his baking comments in here. Bo Dragon says the quarterbacks make the QBs hold the ball longer. And we will be getting to the court quarterback on the regular. Bo, this is great. I love this optimism from you. Every time that you come on a show now, you've got to have this kind of whoever took over your computer. I love it, man. Believe with Bo Dragon. Love it. His wife is on there just antagonizing him. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Um, all right, guys. Yeah, I think we'll kind of wrap it up there. I'll definitely kick it around if there's any for what this is just kind of a free show. So if there's anything else that either of you got, football, basketball, recruiting, I think Haddad is probably gone. Justin, we we've talked about that. He's yeah. visiting Ohio State. He's an Ohio State kid. I mean, that's a tough one to hang on to. I'm not gonna fault any staff for losing an Ohio State kid to Ohio or an Ohio kid to Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, that is what it is. Uh, it sounds like uh, Pritchett's going to be making his decision soon. Sunday. He does have his official visit currently scheduled to Wisconsin. I don't know if he has any other ones scheduled at this point. That's one of those things that, for me, is a tea leaves kind of thing, if a guy actually has a visit scheduled. Now, we have a few guys that are committed that have it to other places that like that have already committed other places that have them set for us. And it's like, well, that doesn't mean anything. But in this case, I, I don't know of any other place that he's got one scheduled for, but the, the, the smoke apparently is towards UNC, but there's nobody knows anything at this point. So and, I would and love to hear that we got him. I yeah, really trust the staff. Follow, I was going to say, for those who may not follow recruiting quite as tightly, you're talking about Marshall Pritchett, the tight yeah. end 25. Um, who is a big, big time guy in this class? Really good player. He's yeah. we're talking X Factor difference maker type player at the tight end position. Yeah. Uh Jan asks, show after the game tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, we'll see. I'll be there and everyone else is invited. It's up to you guys to show or not. <laughs> so, I will not be there. I actually have house guests coming over to watch the game, so I will not be on the reaction show. But I have nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, come Justin, on. Justin, if, if Justin doesn't fall asleep, he'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, it's a great show, guys. I don't have anything else. Rajiv, anything else on your end? For me, I'm just saying, let's everybody cheer on Vermont tomorrow. I don't really want to play Duke in the second round. I'd like to really make a Sweet 16 run. And if we play Duke, that's fine, because we've got a lot of demons to exercise from 2015. Mm -hmm. So if we can exercise them in the round of 32 and get to the Sweet 16, it would make for a really nice story for us. But yeah, just I just want to see us play well tomorrow, honestly. That, to yeah. me, we've had six games of playing good basketball we had great games at the beginning. We had a huge slump in the middle, and I don't want to see that slump team because I think Justin's head will explode if that slump team shows up tomorrow. We don't want that, okay? Because then on Sunday night when it, when we're doing the Bucky Report, I'm going to have to just hear you know, chirping <laughs> the whole time. So I don't want that. I want to see this team play well because you know what? The fans freaking deserve it, okay? We've been here all year. I do not want to see an effort that, that looked anything like the Michigan game or the Rutgers game or any of that nonsense. You showed what you could do at the beginning of the season. You showed what you could do um, during the Big Ten tournament. Show that in the NCAA tournament. This is what it matters. This is what we've been waiting for all year. Let's go, Badgers. I love it, man. I agree. I Don't throw away the incredible win against Purdue by losing in the first round. Like go go out there and validate that win, and honestly, give us something to to be excited about. Mm -hmm. I do like this one here from Commandant, and I'm gonna disagree. Says I don't want to play Duke. I don't want to trip into the Sweet 16. That's for that's for programs that have like five titles, Commandant. <laughs> like I will trip into any yeah. any advancement in March. I'm right happy now. to play Vermont, Commandant. But I hear you though. It'd be great if we listen. We play Duke, we beat Duke. That's great because we have those demons. But I want Vermont. I don't even care about the demons. Like. If, if they both forfeited and we just got into the Sweet 16 <laughs> because we played nobody, I'm not going to shed a tear because I I want a title. <laughs> like So not that this year's team is doing that anyway, but I'm, I'm not worried about tripping into anything. And if we go to the Sweet 16, I know there's some of you that are in Texas. I'm coming to Dallas. I'm going to the Sweet 16. I don't know if any of these guys are going to join me, but I'm going to be there if we get by these next two games. Robert said he just got home from playing ball. How'd you do, Ryan? Or Robert, sorry. I said Ryan. <laughs> How'd you do? Good or bad? Let us know. Um, anyway, we'll wrap it up there, guys. Rajiv, Justin, appreciate it. On Wisconsin, let's beat James Madison. 